Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Branson and we are today going to the world's largest toy museum. Now this place has over 1 million toys. There's something for everyone. Things from the past, things from the present, and who knows what we'll find. So let's roll the intro and move inside. Okay, after we enter in, we are inundated with the amount of things that are around us. We had a brief description as to where to go, the order of the museum, and let me tell you, there's a little bit of everything here, and definitely I am already seeing some childhood memories of my own. So, without further ado, this is the world's largest toy museum. Now, everything we find in this first set of displays, they're all wind-up toys. Tons and tons of wind-up toys. There are so many cool ones in here, though. And this one even says that it has an electric remote control. A little fact here about Penny Toys, or Tin Toys. These are an inexpensive toy that was originated originally in Germany in the 1860s. So several of these that we're finding fall under that category. Oh wow, look at these. These are so cool. They even have little military ones and these are called the Marx Jumpin' Jeeps from the 1930s. I remember this guy. This is Mr. Magoo and they have several different Mr. Magoos here and they were all donated by James David Jones II. This little section is Japanese wind-up autos and these would release the liver and then there you would go with them. They also have some little jumping frogs. In the back here we have little Abner from Dog Patch and there's a few other little Dog Patch items that I've seen scattered throughout. Now for those unfamiliar with Dog Patch, they actually had a theme park in Arkansas that closed. It's now on the list of abandoned and forgotten places after several failed attempts to reopen. And that's kind of sad because I remember going there when I was little and having a blast. I rode around in these little yellow canoes and I remember the characters were so fun to watch and it was just a cool place to go and see just some really crazy antics. But that just goes to show that much like these toys, the past has already happened and many times it fades away. It's up to the people who preserve these things to really make a difference. An entire set of these little wind-up elephants right here. And along with the elephants we have some ducks. Chickens, turkeys, <laughs> a little bit of literally everything. And we've only moved a few feet into the actual museum. These two right here are all these two porky pigs are from approximately 1939. What a find. And these are known as down the hatch from the 1950s. <laughs> See, they have their little bottles of alcohol. <laughs> Look guys, it's Peter Cottontail. This is a whole case of just little cute Peter Cottontails. Oh. Now as we move down through this hall, we are in the car capital of all collectibles. This has to be the most expansive set of cars that I have ever in my entire life seen. For example, this entire set right here is all dedicated to the Country Coach Collection. And those are the buses that some of the artists would have traveled in 
you can see some of them are still in their cases and others are out here for us to see in the front. Here we have double deckers and greyhounds. And some of these are so, so old. A 1920s Turner Overlander bus and a 1920s Royal Blue Line Pullman bus. I'm just gonna let you guys know in advance, there is no way that I could put even a quarter of this museum into the video. There's so many things. So many things I've never even seen before. They have super, super old pieces and then newer pieces. So many collectibles. Whoever put this museum together has done an amazing job categorizing everything so it makes it a little easier to move through. However, with that said, there's so many things here. Now here we have the Johnny Lightning brand and there is an entire case dedicated to the Johnny Lightning brand. Everything from the fully cased, still in the packaging cars to a few that are out and about for us to see in a more 3D way. Puzzles are toys too. Puzzles are toys. You have a lot of Mickeys there, sir. Where are you guys going? Are you all going to Disney World? Oh, there's even a Pluto in here. Hi, little Pluto. And Pinocchio's back there too. I see a goofy hat hanging out. Shrek and Donkey. Oh, how I love you guys. That's a nice boulder. It's a real nice boulder. Literally, as I move through this entire section, I just want to sing all of the theme songs that go along with each and every one of these movies. This is one of my favorite all-time Disney movies. If you believe it, you can do it. Just like Dumbo. Now, in the movie, there were 101 Dalmatians, and I would imagine it to look something very similar to this in one big room. That would be a lot of dogs. Now, this Mickey watch right here is very special. This actually belonged to Opal L. Dunham Greer, and she was given this as a Christmas gift. And this is Miss Opal. So it's nice to see that these two have remained together all this time. Have you ever seen one of these machines? I remember that they used to have some of these at restaurants and you could get them as you would come in and out and each one of the eggs would have a prize in it. Now toys come in all shapes and sizes and different people really tune in to certain kinds of toys. So there literally are all sorts of things here including some really interesting memorabilia. I'm looking right now at something that isn't for everybody, but it's absolutely awesome to a person who loves music. Is that you, Michael? That is you. And then um, right next to it, we have a few others. We have the Revel Rouser Dean and the City Streets Dean and a few records to go along with it. Of course, if you don't want to select just a single person that you're obsessed with and get a doll for them, they had all of these musical toys like this. This is where many of us started out with little noise-making toys. Lots of police cars and toy badges, things like that. Dick Tracy. I remember watching the movie itself whenever it came out and I just thought it was so cool because the colors were so bright and they had all of the different items that looked so neat at the time. Please tell me that you watched this show in like the 90s. Dinosaurs, oh my gosh. So this guy right here, if you didn't, the tagline that he would say is, not the mama, not the mama. <laughs> Look at this, this is the most famous clown of all times. This is Bozo, yes. It used to be on WGN and they would do the ball toss. I remember that. Of course, fire trucks have always been an obsession amongst many. And this room is completely filled with row upon row of fire trucks. 
Now, a fun fact about the fire trucks that we see all along these walls. The original fire truck first made its debut in 1880 as a toy. And since then, the obsession has continued to just grow and grow. Now, as you can see, there are many different kinds and styles from that original tin. Most of them are plastic now. However, that doesn't devalue the fact that it's one of the most long-standing cool toys of all times. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And of course, Coca-Cola has always made sure to integrate toys into their marketing. So everything from the cute little Coca-Cola bears and little tiny items like this truck to bobbleheads for racing. And of course, what toy collection could be complete without superheroes? <laughs> and boy, are there a lot of them here. Now, if you're watching today's video, I do hope that you have Netflix because if you do, you can go check out a little special program that's on there. It's called The Toys That Made Us. I definitely recommend you watching this because they deep dive into some of the most popular sets of toys and not only why they became popular, but also the stories behind what you might remember of playing with these as a child. It's a really cool little docu-series and I definitely recommend that one. Transformers have been around for quite some time and they have so many different forms at this point that it's hard to keep up. Now toys weren't always just something that were plastic. Sometimes it took a little bit more creativity and something like this might have been something that was played with at one point. These are little paper figure sets and you could block them up and create all sorts of fun scenes. Now, no toy display could be complete without just a little bit of Toy Story. This is one of the most popular toy-based movies that is out there at this time. And they have everything from the little green army men, lots of buzzes, <laughs> and uh, tons of woodies here. My favorite Milmakian, it's Alf. Did you know that Legos originated in the 1940s? Of course, these figurines are a little bit more recent, but 1940s, the story of Legos first came into play. And whenever it did, it took the world by storm because of its simplicity of design. Now, it wasn't until 1958, however, that it became mass produced. This was in the 40s starting out as one man creating these interlocking blocks that people really kind of started gravitating toward and liking. It was a really easy way to occupy a child's time and also teach them the fundamentals of putting things together. Legos came around in the 50s and well, the rest is history. This has got to be the creepiest Fred Flintstone ever. I never knew something like this existed. Wow. <laughs> this is of course in the Flintstones display area, one of the more popular cartoons that still runs in syndication and still is pretty cool. Although I have learned now in my older years that they did have some controversies as a part of advertising that went along with the Flintstones. Like for example, did you know that Fred and Barney used to sit out back at their house and smoke because they were sponsored by a cigarette company? I don't recall seeing this ever, but apparently they had a whole series of ads for cigarette companies. I didn't know that. Now, model making has always been something that people truly enjoy, and it started because of toys like this. The Davy Crockett Alamo set, which you could go in and build it and then reenact your favorite things. But long before mass-produced sets like that, people were building all sorts of models and creating their own designs. And that's where things like Lincoln Logs came in and other kits that were available for just stacking and building. So some of these models around here are not from a static kit like these, but instead 
from an artisan or creator who just went with it. Like this right here, this is amazing. Now again, I'm shocked by how many things that are in here. There is both a downstairs and an upstairs. So divide and conquer, here we go. Look at these, wow. Now, being from a Texas town, I have seen tons of John Deere tractors before, but not this many John Deere tractors. I have been able to find numerous toys when I like at tractor supply and things like this, but this expansive collection is above and beyond. And then we have a set of trucks. Now these are every kind of truck that you can imagine all sorts of different brands. Anything you might find going down the highway. Oh my goodness. So many games. Of course, we all know games are toys too. They're in the toy section. That means that they're toys. Now this is something kind of different. I've seen Monopoly. I love Monopoly. I have never seen anti-Monopoly in my life. Mad Magazine game. I've actually seen Mad Magazine and I've played this game. You know all of those bears and little animals that you see every Christmas that look exactly the same as the year before except for the year on them? Well, there's an entire collection of many, many years worth of those. Hey, it's like they're all staring at us with the same face. It's kind of crazy. They just have different clothes on. Oh wait, there's more. And there's more cases than even these. Something pretty special here in the downstairs portion is a scene that has been created using the Christmas Carol as inspiration. And I'm gonna show you how detailed this thing is. It wraps around one entire section of the museum in the downstairs, and it's pretty epic. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Look at this. Right here, these characters have such detail. And of course there's Mr. Scrooge looking all grumpy with his bad hair. And on each one of these we have a description as to what part of the story this would be depicting. Scrooge is being visited by one of the ghosts. And Bob Cratchit's home. As the last of the three spirits arrives, Scrooge is taken into the future. And as you can see back here, this is the spirit. Do you remember when Scrooge hollers out his window for the prize turkey? This is him doing just that. And it looks like the turkeys are right over here. I really love that they've dedicated this space here to A Christmas Carol. It's one of my favorite Christmas stories of all time. I've seen it numerous times in various different translations of the story itself through all sorts of different movies. However, I've also seen it live numerous times. It's a story we all can relate to and in the end, it ultimately shows that good conquers evil. And I like that. Of course, you can always find memorabilia and toys at sporting events. And it's kind of neat to see some of these particular items because some of them, like other items in this museum, date back to the 30s and 40s. They do have a few signed balls, like this ball from Cal Ripken Jr. with the Certificate of Authenticity. Wrestling is a sport too, <laughs> and they have I want to say every wrestling icon from like the beginning of time. But wait, there's a hidden He-Man in here. 
Remember Rock'em Sock'em Rodots? They totally have an interactive one here. We can play against someone. If there was somebody that we could play against. Boom, 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 boom. Just past sports, we enter into a magical world once again. The Lion King. Now, The Lion King is one of the most popular, iconic movies in recent Disney past. It's been recreated as a live action. It has a Broadway. And of course, with that comes lots of toys. Look, you can even have your own grown-up Simba mask. One of my favorite characters. I love Timon, but not quite as much as I love Pumbaa. He's hilarious. In fact, I love Timon and Pumbaa so much that I went ahead and got the Lion King one and a half, which tells their side of the story a little bit different than the original. I will tell you that. If you haven't seen it, watch it. No, Scar, you're bad. You don't even have like a redeeming happy moment at the end. Yes, yes, and yes. The California Raisins, oh my goodness. This is one of the only cartoon groups that still has a best-selling album like they do. I'm pretty sure I used to have more than a few of these figurines right here. Of course, there is a section linking back to McDonald's Happy Meal toys. Now, did you ever go through the drive-thru more than a few times just trying to get that one toy that you were lacking in the set? I have. I have. I'm not ashamed to admit that either. Speaking of McDonald's, here we have good old Ronald. The Care Bears. Now everyone, let's Care Bear stare from home and make the world a happier place. One, two, three. Care Bear stare! This movie is one of the movies that single-handedly traumatized me from animal movies as a child. And yes, I realized that they are in fact cartoon animals, but the concept that he had to die, and that was the whole concept, is sad. Look at this, Cracker Jack prizes. Now the Care Bears that I just showed, as well as the All Dogs Go to Heaven, this entire wall is filled with tiny collections like that. And again, there's just way too many, including pretty much everything to go through and show all of them. I feel like my childhood literally is unfolding before me on one single wall though. I remember most of these. Now another section of this particular building has tons of porcelain dolls, like tons of them. And I have a collection from whenever I was younger packed away and I remember how cool they were at the time and then as I got older just their little eyes never blinking it started to freak me out but there's some really impressive ones here and they have some collectors it's literally the never-ending museum and now i understand fully why it is the world's largest toy museum The ventriloquism dolls are staring at me in a way I am not comfortable with whatsoever. Trolls, trolls everywhere. Cases upon cases of trolls. And did you ever have one of these? Because they actually are quite an interesting little doll in itself. You can go to a place that actually will birth your cabbage patch for you while you're there straight from the cabbage patch. And if you thought that trolls were everywhere, check out the Beanie Babies. There's even more of them. My Little Pony, yep, they've got it too. Even Mr. T, check, check, and check. All of these toys are from Saturday Night Live. And then MASH. Some really interesting takes on what Marilyn Monroe might have looked like. And then one of our personal favorites is Snoopy and Charlie Brown. I love these. Now, I was actually really impressed by how many toys that the M&Ms have come out with. I mean, I knew there were a lot because they come out with those little candy holders and they're ultimately toys that you can put back together and play with. But I had no idea that there would be case upon case upon case of them. There's a lot. 
And of all of them, I think this guy right here is my favorite. He's cute, but he's my favorite. Now the really interesting thing is, like always, we do exit through the gift shop, but the gift shop has even more toys. And those aren't the ones that are counted in the inventory of how many toys are in the museum. There's tons. And now I'm gonna show you a few of the ones that you can actually pick up and take home with you as a result of just visiting as you exit through the gift shop. Not your standard toy soldier. This one is a bendy soldier. Looking for something a bit larger? They've got you covered. Thinking putty? I guess this is supposed to help you process your thoughts. Lots of different games, of course. They have these adorable Branson Bears, which actually are produced by the same creator as Ted E. Ruxpin, like the original one. Super cute. Whew. Guys, that was a lot of toys. So many toys. I've never seen anything near that many toys, even in a toy store that's fully packed at Christmas time, waiting for people to come and pick up everything. I hope that you enjoyed coming with me to the world's largest toy museum here in Branson, Missouri. If you did, make sure that you leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and check out the interactive map in the description below for more adventures like this one. Not only just here in Branson, but everywhere. Until next time, guys. Bye!